I somehow got this degree. And uh, then there was the thought, you know, you really have to go to work. You know, you're no longer a student. You have to do something. And at that point, a friend of mine who was living at International House kept bugging me. And he said, uh, I think you should go to Michael Reese Hospital where Samuel Beck, the great expert on the Rorschach ink block test, has a grant to do a study on schizophrenia. And I really think you should apply for that. I said, well, I don't know anything about the Rorschach. I, you know, I never took any courses. I was trying to take the minimal number of courses in order to get through this in order to learn something later. So, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I uh, did see Dr. Beck, who is extraordinarily gracious. And I said, Dr. Beck, I don't know why I'm here, but uh, I've never taken a course in the Rorschach. I don't know anything about it. He said, terrific. No, that, that's marvelous. <laughs> yeah, you have not been contaminated by false teachings. Uh, so you will learn it freshly in, in this setting. And then he asked me to title my doctoral dissertation, which was a kind of early biofeedback uh, study with a primitive piece of equipment called the Daryl Photopolygraph. Uh, those of you who know anything about psychophysiology will recognize that that was one of the very pioneering instruments in this area of trying to measure autonomic nervous system functioning, galvanic skin response, respiration, heart rate, and so forth. And you got long film records and things of that kind. And I thought it would be sort of interesting to find out if people who underwent Rogerian psychotherapy or client-centered psychotherapy had a greater frustration tolerance level after that experience than they had before. So I touched them in a kind of stress situation before and after, and lo and behold, uh, the Holy Spirit obviously was there all the time, even though I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, and would have been affronted, I'm sure, if anyone had mentioned it. But uh, somehow it, it worked out, and there were some uh, differences, and uh, that was very exciting to Sam Beck and some other people who thought, that's terribly scientific. They thought it was scientific because they didn't understand it. <laughs> and found that, well, this is sort of the way things go. So I found myself uh, working in a hotbed of uh, psychoanalysts at... Uh, <laughs> I was terribly impressed, uh, so at least one of them had been analyzed by Freud. Uh, I didn't realize that that was like a six-week quickie thing where, you know, apparently one wandered in for an hour a week and Freud said, well, that's fine, you know, and I'll go away and do your thing. So uh, I didn't know anything about that, but I departed from the Rogerian philosophy sufficiently to become involved in something that was regarded as antithetical to this philosophy. Uh, when this research program was uh, completed, I then went to Washington, to the Washington School of Psychiatry, and I also did some consulting work with the government during that period. In the course of that, I was sent to the American University in Beirut, uh, Lebanon, for uh, the summer of 53. And again, I was sent because I was unqualified, but, uh, you know, they needed somebody, and you know, I didn't know anything about Middle Eastern affairs. It was rather extraordinary. It made a very profound impression on me. Uh, I'd never been out of the country, except for maybe Canada. Uh, and uh, here was the Holy Land, and I saw Israel uh, and Jordan and Jerusalem on both sides, and uh, Baghdad and Cairo and, you know, Athens and, you know, all those places. And something did happen to me, although I really wasn't quite sure what it was, in the back of my mind, there was a feeling, this is familiar somehow. But uh, we didn't talk about things like that, so uh, whatever that was, uh, was largely unverbalized. When I left Washington, I went to Hartford, Connecticut, where I was the director of the psychology department at the Institute of Living. and. Uh, person on the next floor below me was doing all kinds of fancy work with uh, monkeys and so forth. His name was Carl Prebram. And uh, uh, became interested in what Carl was, was doing and uh, all this was terribly fascinating. But this really can't be it. So I did receive an offer about that time 
from Cornell University Medical College in New York City. Even though Cornell is in Ithaca, the medical school is in New York City. And a very famous neurologist named Harold G. Wolfe, who was one of the founders of psychosomatic medicine, wanted to set up a very elaborate study program that had to do with cross-cultural studies and highest integrative functions in man under stress and all kinds of exciting things. Uh, so it was a honor, I thought, to be invited to join that particular program. And it was not until I got to Cornell that I suddenly realized somehow I'm in academia because somebody gave me an academic title. It was only an instructor, uh, but uh, at least I had my first uh, official appointment at that point. The following year, I was made an assistant professor, and just after that, a, an old friend of mine sort of wandered out of the woodworks, as uh, people frequently do, and uh, approached me and said that we can't find anyone at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, the, the medical center, to head up the pre-doctoral training program in clinical psychology. And they had a big list of famous people and so forth. Well, obviously, these people weren't going to accept uh, this particular kind of job. And he said, uh, also, the, the search committee doesn't like most people. He said, but they don't know you. <laughs> so it seemed that uh, that was uh, keeping a low profile at times has been useful in my life. So, so I uh, thought, well, I really don't wish to leave Cornell and go way up to Washington Heights and take that long subway ride through Harlem and all those things, uh, you know, why? So I held out and I thought the clever way of doing this and being gracious at the same time, I used to think I could figure things out, uh, that the, the, the way to, to do this is to simply say, well, this is obviously going to involve so many responsibilities that I couldn't possibly accept uh, an appointment like this unless I was made an associate professor. Well, this is now, you know, like a year, year and a half after an uh, instructor and assistant professor, and uh, I thought that would take care of the matter, and it almost seemed to. But uh, uh, somehow, because they were desperate, uh, Dr. called the chairman of the psychiatry department, managed to persuade the dean, and uh, I suddenly got a letter offering me an appointment as an associate professor of medical psychology at Columbia uh, in the College of Physicians and Surgeons. So this was a little over two years after I had taken my first academic appointment with that resolution, I'll never end up being a professor. <laughs>